Hello, welcome to a show about high school basketball in South Dakota. I'm Tom Neiman along with Jason Andera. This is Varsity Sports for the Web. We're not sure what we're going to call it yet, but we're talking about South Dakota high school Oops. basketball. We're going to talk in this segment about uh, boys double A in South Dakota, Jandy. And Jason Andera has been at work for the last month or so putting together previews. They will come out uh, on Midco Sports Network's mm -hmm. webpage, your blogs. Tell us what, uh, what you've been working yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to get as much information from as many coaches as possible across the state of South Dakota, boys and girls. Um, and so, yeah, I'll have, I don't know, about 19 pages worth of stuff on my blog uh, starting right now. You can go to midcosn.com slash blog. Check it out. Voluminous information on all these teams. And let's talk about boys double A. And uh, we've got the media poll out. You're part of that media poll this year. You're not doing your own rankings. Is that right? No, I have given up on my own power Why? rankings. Um, well, because I, I get to make my own power rankings. They're called votes now because okay. they're, I'm now included. So I feel, I feel great about that, that the whole media is getting together. But I still get to criticize the media poll when I don't agree with it. So we'll do that a little later in the show. All right, we've got the, the top five out. Yankton is going to be the number one team going into the season in boys double A. They are. It, but at first, should we hear from some of the players and coaches? Let's do that right now. Let's do that. Let's hear from some of the players and coaches in that top five. After what happened last year is uh, obviously a special end to the year. Um, put, the, put it together at the right time, I guess. And it didn't, didn't hit right away, but through the spring and through the summer and even into the fall, uh, you know, you soaked it in a little by little. Well, obviously chemistry is one of the biggest parts of basketball. And last year we had really good chemistry with Jack, Cameron, Casey, and Ben. And now, now they're all gone. But I think that chemistry is transferred over to this year's group, and everyone's getting along really well, and we're treating the way or treating each other way that they be, should be treated. We're all a good group of friends in the locker room. We've been, we've all been playing together. We know each other really well. Uh, we like each other. We, and uh, it'll be a fun year, I think. I really like being around these guys. They're hard workers, uh, very vocal. Um, we've seen a lot of, um, uh, I guess, increase as far as. Uh, um, athletic ability and, and personnel. So we're really excited about this year's group. At the post position, we have Akoy Akoy, who uh, started most of the games last year. Zach Norton started uh, most of the games down the stretch. Uh, Zach's only going to be a junior for us. Uh, we have uh, Cole Brun, Luke Ronsink. Um, you know, we're excited about this year's group because we have a perimeter game and we have some bigs that are going to be tough to handle. I've been doing this a long time. Last year we had four seniors, this year we have eight seniors. I'm probably twice as comfortable right now than I am having only four. I mean, I don't know, we're a pretty solid team, just keep, keeping our turnovers low, crashing the boards hard, that's what we've been working on, crashing boards hard, so. Yeah, we have eight seniors back, and uh, we have uh, five juniors and three sophomores this year, so we should have quite a few uh, veteran leaders and also some newcomers. Uh, Evan Talcott, obviously. Uh, he's a great shooter. Nate Keegan can hit the, sh hit the three. He's great at controlling the offense, kind of telling us what to do or whatever. Gavin Terhark, I think, is going to come in big this year. He's a big, big player, like what he does in the post. Well, we're definitely going to be a, a finished product by the end of the year, so it's going to take a little while to gel. You know, the one thing about, about Double A is, the, you know, our first weekend we get a test right off the bat facing Yankton and Brandon. We get one starter back, and that's Jared Jaros. Uh, he's had a great summer, fantastic summer, so we're kind of expecting some big things. We got some kids that'll help him out. They got a little, few minutes last year, but not a whole lot of experience coming back for us. Uh, definitely just playing together. Like, if we do that, who knows what we could do. We could make a big run late, and hopefully that's what we're going for. All right, you don't know in, in uh, Double A what's going to happen week to week, but let's go through. This is the top five going into the season with uh, Yankton, the defending state champions, won 17 games last year, their first title in 40 years last year with Matthew Moores. Moores has been part of the varsity since seventh grade. Yeah. And he goes into his sophomore season now this year. Yeah, he's already had a career, a three-year career, and he gets another three-year career, yeah. sophomore, junior, senior. But l let's just talk about Matthew Moores. I, I got to see him last week in Yankton. He looks, he looks even stronger, uh, even lighter, even more agile than he did a year ago. And he, I asked him what he worked on last year. He said he worked on that fadeaway jumper, and I think that won him the state title. He was so good at that fadeaway jumper. This year, he's working on ball handlings because I think he's going to be handling the ball you know, even more than he did last and year. And he's six foot eight. He's probably the tallest kid in the state, and maybe the, he's right there, he's the yeah. best player in the state 
as a sophomore. Sure. Rex Riken is also back. We heard from him there. Had a great state tournament last year in support of Matthew Moore. So well, that's Moore's is going to need a little help, and Riken is there. That, and some other guys. That's the question. You heard of, uh, Matthew in the quotes right there. How are we going to replace those five seniors? Well, he thinks that they've got a couple guys. They've got a, a six-eight junior who's uh, going to be in the mix a little bit. Uh, Rex Riken is definitely solid. You've got you know guys like uh, Cooper Corneman who's going to be a junior this year playing a role. Um, they've got Owen Feaser. Some of these guys are going to really have to step up their game to take a little bit off of Matthew Moore's. All right, O'Gorman's two, Brandon Valley's three. Why is that not flipped around? Yeah. Brandon Valley looks really good. I personally think Brandon Valley is the team. They're going to be a lot different. They are day one here versus what they're going to be in March. I think in March they're the one team that you look to and has a true point guard, a true two, a true three, a true four, a true five, and a very deep bench, and a couple of sophomores who aren't even really in the rotation yet, who I think by the end of the year, you know, you're going to talk about a guy named Jackson Hilton, a sophomore for them, who eventually will be one of the best players in the state. He's going to get added to that mix in the varsity. I think they are the most complete team by the time the year ends, which is when everybody tries to peak. Evan Talcott, 17 points a game yeah. last year for Brandon Valley. Uh, Carter Altoff, we know some of these guys from football, but who is Gavin Terhark? A six foot seven junior for Brandon Valley. Gavin Turkart. Okay, this kid was hurt last year as a sophomore, so we didn't get to see him. He would have definitely played. He's coming in as a force down low. He's a true post player, six seven guy. Um, he's strong on the post. He's got offensive moves. He's already got a college scholarship offer to USF and hasn't even played in high school yet. I think this kid is going to change people defensively and give them an offensive post weapon that most teams in the state don't have. And the last name is, say it again. Turkhart. Turkhart. Gavin Turkhart, six foot seven junior from Brandon Valley, a kid to watch. Rapsi Stevens, third last year at the state tournament. Uh, who is Dawson Paulson for Rapsi Stevens? Dawson Paulson, okay, so we've gotten used to some Mason Archambos and Steven Schaefer's kind of taken over for Stevens in the last five years. I think this year Dawson Paulson is that guy who can take over on offense. He needs some help though, and that's why Dylan Poirier is so important. He came over from Douglas, transferred from Douglas, has state title or state tournament experience that he's bringing back uh, and desperately needs some help because Paulson, Paulson's the only returning starter for Stevens. So again, a team that hopes in a couple of months they'll look a lot different than they do off the top, but Dawson Paulson will be able to start right away and pick that team up. And Stevens won more games than anybody last yeah. year. Stevens won 22 games last year, finished third at the state tournament. Sioux Falls Lincoln, the last team in the top five here. 15 wins last year. Heard about Jared Jaros, uh, one of the best players in the state from Lincoln. He's a kid that can just light it up from three. I mean, hit 12 three-pointers in the state tournament last year. And uh, this season, what he worked on, we ask all these kids, what did they work on? He worked on driving and getting the ball to the hoop. So I think he's going to open things up for some other guys outside. Uh, Nate Breck, for instance, had a great offseason for Lincoln. He's going to be in the mix for them uh, shooting outside. They've got a lot of players. Lincoln always has a lot of players that they can bring up from the JV squad. Outside of these five, Harrisburg finished second in the state yeah. tournament last year. They're not in the top five going into this year. Why? Well, yeah, why? No, they, they lose a lot of seniors, and they'll admit a lot of athleticism's fallen off. But they do have two of the better players in the state. Nick Hoyt is a really good guard for them, maybe one of the best shooters in the state. And uh, Blair Slaughter's going to take more of a senior leadership role this year. But I think they've got too many pieces to fill versus some of these other teams look pretty complete just to start the season. So I think they'll be a team that grows as the year goes, but uh, not right off the top. Sioux Falls Roosevelt was 9-11 and 11 last year. You expect them to be better. Tucker West, 6'6". Six six. A kid named Aiden Evans, 6'7", moved into Sioux Falls. They got Brady Dannenbring at 6'5". They could put a lot of size out there. Who is Aiden Evans who will play this so, year for Roosevelt? Yeah, Aiden Evans is a new guy on the scene. He comes from out of state, uh, played at Texas, in, in Texas somewhere, and uh, he's come back to Roosevelt and will be have an opportunity to really take some offensive input because they don't have a lot back that – scored a lot last year. Tucker West shot pretty well, uh, but I think Aiden Evans has a chance to be a, a dominant force for them. And their sophomore class, I mean, there's some good sophomore classes coming up with Brandon Valley and Lincoln, but this sophomore class at Roosevelt is definitely one to watch. Tyler Feldkamp and company, uh, they're going to be getting some minutes and uh, they're, they're a very balanced team. Mitch Begman's done a great job with that team over the last two years. Washington, no starters back from last year. Won 13 games last year. Carter Shields is a really good player. Gabe Pearson is going to be a really good player for Washington, but they might 
Yeah. I, understand. I mean, they, they've got athletes. They always have good athletes. Jet Anderson comes back from the football team to play basketball. But like you said, Carter Shields is going to be the guy who takes the huge step up and really leads them on offense. And Gabe Pearson is just a tremendous athlete. Uh, but they've got a lot to figure out, too. They, they're not used to not having anybody back. Usually they'll transfer a couple guys into their starting lineup. Outside of Sioux Falls, here on a uh, new coach there, new boys coach, uh, was an assistant there, John Shelton. Uh, seven wins last year. They're going to win more games than that this year. Kobe Bush at 6'5", one of the best players in the state. Uh, almost 20 points a game last year as a sophomore. So they got Bush. What else will Huron have? Well, they, they've got senior leaders on this team. They've got guys who can come in and uh, play solid minutes who are used to being on the varsity squad. But really the leader of the team, you said it, is Kobe Bush. And he, he's, he's a unique player because he's about 6'5", but he literally could play any position on the court. And he's most dominant when he can get outside and spread you out and then drive right past you to the hole. And he also has improved his outside shot. So... Uh, Kobe Bush is a guy, if he's coming through town, take time to go watch him. He's one of the best in the state. All right, Everdeen Central, 13 wins last year, but you get outside of that. Mitchell, uh, just one win last year. Brookings had four wins last year. Watertown uh, has a new coach this year. They won nine games last year. Any of those teams going to be any better? Aberdeen, Mitchell, Brookings, Watertown? I, I think Watertown's a team that has enough depth to, to cause peace, people some issues. They've got a new coach this year. I think Rapid City Central is another team that, he showed some promise at the end of last year, finishing fourth at state. They lose that dynamic backcourt they had, but they've got a lot of athletes coming up too who I've heard a lot about, and it just depends how quickly those sophomores and juniors really take heed and really get going. Um, so I think Rapid City Central, Watertown, Aberdeen's got got some talent. Um, you know, it's, it's double A. I mean, Pier, Pier's got players back coming off of a football title. Um, no no uh, cupcakes this year. All right, uh, the season – Starts on Friday. Games Friday and Saturday. What are you looking forward to uh, coming up on Friday in boys double A? Well, Harrisburg has one of their toughest games right off the bat playing Western Christian. They've got a home game to start things off. Sioux Falls, Washington heads to Huron. So you got a little Kobe Bush going against that uh, starterless, returning starterless uh, Washington team. And then Brandon Valley and Stevens. I mean, this is two of the best teams in the state right off the bat. Uh, again, I think those two teams will be very different in a couple months, but it'll be interesting to see how those guys get started right off the bat. And then, yeah. That's going to be really good because Stevens is home against uh, Brandon Valley on Friday night and then Yankton on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Brandon Valley, Yankton, my two top teams, play against Stevens to start the week, and then they play against each other next Thursday in the Throwback Classic. That'll be right here on Midco SN, so that will be interesting as well. And then Saturday also, O'Gorman and Roosevelt, I'm really interested to see how that west side of Sioux Falls battle goes. The Huron Mitchell matchup is uh, at the Corn Palace as well on Saturday night. So there's your preview for Boys AA in South Dakota. And again, if you go to the Midco Sports Network webpage, Jason and Dare's got paragraphs and paragraphs of information on all of these Probably teams too much. that he's been working on for the last month or so. So there you go. Uh, we will uh, see you next time uh, to talk about some Boys AA basketball here on this show. Ha, <laughs>